How do we analyse post-tonal music? Analytical methods from the common practice period, roughly between 1600 and 1900, were designed to explain music organised around tonal hierarchies like scales, key centres and functional harmony. We describe scales as major or minor, label pitches with names like tonic dominant and subdominant, and analyse chord progressions using Roman numerals based on their role within a key. This approach can reveal a lot about the music of Bach, Mozart and Beethoven. When we move beyond the common practice period, these methods break down. Post-tonal composers in the early 20th century abandoned established structures such as diatonic scales and tonic dominant based harmonies. Instead, their works often focus on abstract collections of pitches and the intervallic relationships between them. To understand this kind of music, theorist Alan Fort introduced a new system called musical set theory, which categorizes and compares pitch collections independently of key, scale and functional harmony. The foundation of musical set theory is the concept of pitch classes, which group together all notes that share the same name regardless of octave. For example, a C in any register belongs to the same pitch class. We label notes of the chromatic scale starting with C as 0 and counting up to 11. We can visualise this around a clock face. After moving through the 12 semitones, we cycle back to the starting pitch class. Groups of pitch classes representing the pitch content of a musical idea replace traditional structures such as chords. We can track how these recur and develop across a musical work. Combinations of pitch classes are called pitch class sets. To make it easier to compare different sets and identify recurring structures, we use a standard method to categorize them based on their most compact arrangement. Let's consider a set consisting of the pitch classes 2, 6, 9 and 10. We need to find the most compact ordering, so we first rotate the set to check all possible orderings. For each rotation, we measure the distance in semitones between the first and last pitch class. We have a tie between the first two rotations, which both span eight semitones. When this happens, we consider the most compact arrangement to be the one with the smallest intervals on the left. The leftmost interval in 2, 6, 9, 10 spans four semitones, but the leftmost interval in 6, 9, 10, 2 spans three semitones. Therefore, this second rotation can be considered the most compact arrangement. This is considered the best normal order. We next need to transpose the best normal order so that the first pitch class is zero. Inversions are considered to belong to the same set class, so we'll need to compare our set to its inversion and select the most compact version. This is called the prime form. We'll invert the set and check its rotations. The first and second rotations both span eight semitones, but the second rotation is the most left packed. Therefore, this is the best normal order. We'll transpose this onto zero and compare it to our original. In this case, the inversion is more left packed because it starts with the smaller interval. Therefore, this is the prime form of our pitch class set. Composers can interweave pitch class sets in complex ways. Larger sets might be broken down into smaller sets and smaller sets can be combined to form larger ones. When a smaller pitch class set is fully contained within a larger one, we call it a subset. When a larger set contains a smaller set, we call it a superset. When a set is inverted, we indicate this with I. When a set is transposed, we specify this with T, followed by the transposition level. For example, if the prime form of the set is transposed so that it begins on pitch class 7, we call it T7. If the inversion is transposed onto pitch class 7, it is called T7I. Traditionally, intervals were defined in terms of tonal relationships, such as major thirds and minor sixths. Since these relationships are less relevant in post-tonal music, set theory defines an interval by simply counting the number of semitones between two pitch classes. We simplify intervals further with interval classes. This is the smallest distance between two pitch classes, which means that inversions of intervals are considered equivalent. We can visualize this by counting semitones clockwise on our clock face. For example, the distance from pitch class 2 to pitch class 10, traditionally called a minus 6, is 8 semitones. But the distance from pitch class 10 to pitch class 2 is 4 semitones. So we call this interval class 4. 
Any interval larger than 6 has a smaller inversion. Therefore, interval classes range from 1 to 6. Interval vectors provide an intervallic profile for a given set, helping us to understand its harmonic character and see how it relates to other sets. An interval vector contains six positions within angle brackets, representing the six possible interval classes. Each position records how many times that specific interval class occurs in the set. Let's return to our previous example and list the intervals between all pitch class pairs. Our set contains one occurrence of interval class 1, no occurrences of interval class 2, one occurrence of interval class 3, three occurrences of interval class 4, one occurrence of interval class 5, and no occurrences of interval class 6. It is possible for two different pitch class sets to share the same interval vector. These are called Z-related sets. A famous example are the sets 0146 and 0137. Both contain one of each interval class, even though the sets themselves are structurally different and cannot be transformed into each other by transposition or inversion. They are called all interval tetrachords. Let's see how we might apply set theory to analyze a real piece of music. Here is the opening section from Oliver Nusson's Piano Variations. Now in theory, we could describe any group of notes as a pitch class set. We could divide the passage into a succession of one note sets, treat the entire passage as a single set of 12 pitch classes, or arbitrarily select notes that happen to fit a set we choose. These approaches would reveal little of real analytical value. So our first challenge is deciding where to begin. How do we segment the pitch material into sets that are musically meaningful? There should be a strong case for grouping notes together, based for instance on gesture, contiguity, rhythm, or register. Here, Nusson begins with a clear four-note opening gesture. Let's focus on that. It contains the pitch classes 9, 0, 4, and 10. This is the set 0137, transposed to begin on pitch class 9. The exact same version of this set recurs four more times in these opening bars. So we might want to investigate whether there are any transformations of this set. Look at bar 3. Here, we find the inversion and later, beginning at bar 8, four more transformations of this set appear. Recall that set 0137 is one of the two Z-related all-interval tetrachords. If we look closely at this passage, we'll find the other all-interval tetrachord, 0146, immediately after the opening gesture, inverted and transposed onto pitch class 10. And continuing through the rest of this opening, we can uncover six more transformations of this set. So already, we can see that behind the intricate rhythms and detailed figuration, Nusson is using these sets as structural units to build a harmonic logic that underpins this piece. If you want to explore set theory further, I recommend Fort's own text, The Structure of Atonal Music. Leave your questions, feedback, and suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what you'd like to see next, and thank you for watching.